quick little video update. Uh, just got finished washing the truck. Just did it by hand with a bucket and some spray wax. Um, obviously the side steps aren't that great from taking a lot of road abuse. Hear music in the background, of course, because didn't want to be cleaning without some music. It's probably killing my battery, but oh well. Looking pretty good overall. You can see the debadging's all done. Yeah. Not bad. Okay, so here's what we got. We got an Alpine SWS 12D4. 12 inch high performance dual voice coil. Dual 4 ohm voice coils. 500 watts RMS. It's being a weird autofocus. Recording it. All my videos are recorded from my Samsung Galaxy S5 currently. Eventually, maybe get a good GoPro. Um, that's the peak power, but I don't pay no mind to that. I'm going to be basically running it just a little bit above that. Same like I did for my Scar Audio subs, and those lasted for about two years before. Uh, the one on the passenger side ended up blowing the voice coil. If you watched the video of uh, Mismatch Sub Life, uh, I was running those for the past two years in 600 watts each sub, so these ones I'm going to do the same with um, after I give these a good break-in period anyways. Um, I figure these will be able to handle the power load better than the SCAR audio ones without getting as warm as the SCARs did because the SCAR audio subs had a 2-inch dual forum voice coil. These ones have a 2.6 inch voice coil, so that is quite beneficial compared to the other one. Let's see if there's any interesting information here. There's all the specs right there. 65. Well, I have to put it in millimeters. I don't understand that. All the information in case anybody wants to know any of this stuff. And there's the, the main specifications. Right there is about my minimum, or the specifications of the current sealed box that I have. So this is right where I'll be right at the minimum requirements for that. Um, so anyways, how I ended up with this particular brand of subwoofer. Take it out. Um, came by recommendation of uh, Justin Wolf. You may know him as if you have him on your YouTube channel, if you're subscribed to him. If you're not subscribed to Justin Wolf, I highly recommend subscribing to him and checking out his channel. He used to be known as uh, Ground Pounder Integra, and I believe he has another YouTube group, or maybe it's just a Facebook one, uh, under Shutch Street Poetry, it goes by. Because outside of car audio and installs and 
mechanical repairs. I see he does a lot of time with various vehicles that he that he has. He also does like uh, a little bit of music mixing and stuff, and uh, creates some pretty cool beats and stuff. He actually uh, has said that he will. He offers to make people some bass demo stuff if they want with whatever program he uses for music. So, I mean, if that's something you're interested in, definitely check him out. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to post links to his YouTube and Facebook or anything like that in my video for this that I'm going to post. Um, so basically, I got two of these match each other uh the scario subs that i had one blue voice coil removed it put in the mb court as you may have seen the mb court lasted for about a week or two before it just couldn't handle the extra 200 watts i was pushing to it as per its uh rms wattage was 400 the star is around 5, I believe, but I was pushing 6 to it, and the one is still holding up right now. It's wired to 2 ohms, and it's getting 600 just by itself currently. The way I had it wired before, they were each getting 600 at 1 ohm, so... The one, obviously, it could have been a structural thing after I had ixnade and chopped a couple of the basket arms, which I know was a no-no with cardio because it could have weakened the structure around the spider or something, caused the voice coil to uncoil to one side or something. But I had to do what I had to do to get them to fit in there because I wanted bass and it actually, they lasted for quite a bit. For quite a bit of time like that um they always got not like hot but fairly warm in that enclosure and the one still kind of does get a little bit warm uh i'm guessing just as we're pushing it a little bit higher than it's rated rms watts and just the the smaller voice coil this one having the bigger voice coil should be able to handle the a little bit of extra power along with the the heat dispersion should be better in this one as compared to the last sub I had. So I mean I'll end up finding out anyways after I give it the break in period. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it with like music and slowly just turning it up over several days or if I'm just gonna free air them on 40 hertz for a bit. And uh, just slowly every like five to ten minutes or something like that, turn it up a couple of notches and just see how that goes. Because I've heard it just kind of helps with the springiness of the uh, of the coils and this the spider and everything to loosen it up before just shoving it in the box. So now that I've done most of talking. I'm going to put you guys back There we go. It's legit this cardboard. pajama pants by the way <laughs> check that out here wow yeah that is that's 
very tight. Wow. Give me that. That's not much pressure, but still. That's really cool. This craftsmanship, this of course is just a cover, to cover the screw holes to make it look prettier. Remember that from my uh, Type R, which I mean the one in the Type R would often flop off, so I think I like use some epoxy to kind of hold it on a couple corners or silicone. Nice terminals on this. Much larger than the ones on the Scar Audio ones. Or, I shouldn't say much larger, but a fair bit larger. Nice and tight, too, like. It'll be easier for wiring because they're all on one side as opposed to the Scar Audio was two here, two on that side. So, this should make things easier for wiring up. You see the nice. Spider in there. This coil in there. Can't really see it all that well, but the bottom, the venting, and everything. Magnet cover as I'm just whacking with my phone. That's something. So yeah. This is one I have to work with for now. Got two of these. I want to put that on wrap here and take a look at it, see how it is. I'm gonna, in a bit, take out my voltmeter. I think I'll do that now while I'm recording still. So, they're both 3.7. That's more comforting. I thought one was like 3.8 and one was like 3.7. Although there's a variance anyway, it's not that I was actually concerned. Because my Scar ones were 3.4. Which apparently it's a normal thing to see anywhere from 3.4 to up to 4. Exactly, which is some are that, some aren't. But, uh... You don't want to be under 3.4, and for a dual forum, you don't want to be above 4. I'm pretty sure is how that uh, works out. So, this is looking good. And it's got some good grip. Um, so, yeah. This one is good and ready to go. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one in the box. The arrow pops it. Oh, that is cool. Look at that. That like pops right out just like that. Just like, where's the base? It's that away. Anyways, I think that's all I'm going to record for now. This, uh, couple of little banana plugs right there. Some sort of thank you letter for purchasing this brand. An important notice warning sort of thing. Which I'm probably not going to read. I was just looking to see if there's stickers in there. There's not that I can tell. So, oh, there's wiring diagrams in the back there. Perfect. That's awesome. Can't screw it up then. My next video may be of me free airing this at 40 hertz. Well, both of these, or 
I don't remember to do that, then it may just be um, after the break-in period, just bumping them, seeing how they are, what kind of excursion they get and whatnot, uh, how they play and sound with certain songs. So stay tuned for that video because that will be coming up soon enough.